So one thing about moving to Miami, Florida is that it could be overwhelming. Miami is a very large city and a lot of suburbs and neighborhoods surrounding it. So definitely want to make sure that you move into the right neighborhood. So one thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull up the Google Maps and we're gonna take a tour around all of Miami. I'm gonna show you the different neighborhoods, how far are they from each other, so you can have a good feel of, okay, no, maybe I wanna live here. No, this place sounds good the lifestyle of each neighborhood and the type of housing you'll see in because one thing you don't want to move down here is the wrong neighborhood if for many reasons maybe it's not the desirable neighborhood that you expected it's far from your job it's far from other things that you like to do so let's go ahead and jump into the map so you can get a good idea before making that important move down here to Miami Florida I'm going to jump into it right now <music> What's up guys, this is Ray G, your Florida Realtor with the Living in Miami, Florida team. If this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living, eating, sleeping, playing in Miami, Florida and the surrounding areas, then subscribe below and tap that bell for notification so you can be the first to learn and be well informed before making your move to Miami, Florida. We get calls, texts and emails every day from people just like you looking to make their move to Miami, Florida and we absolutely love it. So. Whether you're moving soon, in 90 days, a year from now, feel free to reach out to us, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or schedule a Zoom call. We're happy to help you make that move to Miami, Florida as smooth as possible. So let's jump into the Google Maps and go over everything you need to know about living in Miami, Florida, all the neighborhoods, the location of it, the type of housing, what's surrounding it, what is there to do, the schools, all that. So let's go ahead and and uh, check that out and let's get started. All right guys, I have the Google Maps pulled up on my computer and highlighted here in the light shaded is actually the city of Miami. You're probably wondering, why is it so small? Yeah, because this is the old part of Miami, which is actually the city of Miami. Um, but when we say Miami, we consider it all of Miami-Dade County, which we'll talk about today. Um, but Miami started out at downtown in the Brickell area um, Mary uh, Brickle and Julia Toto were the two founders. There were two ladies that founded Miami and they convinced Henry Flagler to extend the railroads, the railway, all the way down to Miami so they could start building out the city. Because they used to go all the way to West Palm Beach and he ended up taking it all the way to Key West. Um, but Miami grew fast right away. They had a rapid growth in the late 1800s. Early 1900s was a boom and it started spreading out. Coral Gables was a, a city in the early 1920s that was uh, was constructed as well. But let's start with the downtown area, which is right here on the east part. So everything grew out westward. US 41 is what we call H Street. It sort of divides the north part of Miami and the south, but not really. It's actually Flagler Street, which if I zoom in a little bit, uh, you'll see here Flagler Street, which is just the next main street from A Street. And that divides the north part of Miami and the south part of Miami. But US 41 is what we call A Street, the famous A Street, which has the uh, Calle Ocho festivals, one of the largest one day outdoor festival in the world, I think. So that is um, something special that goes on every year in Miami. US 41 goes all the way west to the west coast of Florida, all the way to Naples and goes up north. So let's talk about this part of Miami. Downtown, if you like living where all the action is and either you're married with kids and still like to be in, in, uh, in all the action or you're single, a couple, and um, wanna be close to all the things that are happening, the festivals, the restaurants, the bars, the lounges, and you have more of the nightlife Downtown Brickell area is the place to be. Also, Wynwood is another place up here that is a great place if you love art and you love that urban feel. Um, this was started to bloom like 10 or 12 years ago when they made the Midtown shops here with a tons of restaurants and shops and they extended it. But now Wynwood, all those warehouses that were old and run down 
they turned them into art studios and once a month they have art festivals where you can walk around drink some wine and just mingle with the people and enjoy the art and have a good time at night and but besides that all the restaurants everything that goes on here has some kind of influence with the arts and which is pretty cool so this is the place to be if you like that urban art artistic feel edgewater is right next to winwood on the east side of us1 which is full of condos which have beautiful views of miami beach you're close to downtown us1 all the highways so that's another great spot to live if you want the, the urban condo lifestyle downtown now starting to pick up before it was just an area where you just work and get out now there's a lot of nice condos especially on the biscayne boulevard area and northeast second avenue gorgeous luxurious condos we got bayfront park right here we could just walk around enjoy the nice breeze hop away from the cruise terminals you got miami beach right there the miami heat play in the miami arena right here let's see if i can pull it up there it is ftx arena that's where the miami heat play it's it's a gorgeous location you got the water behind it there used to be i don't know what is there now uh gloria stefan had the restaurant that turned into a nightclub but it was pretty cool you got bayside marketplace right here which also is a marina it connects with Bayfront Park, uh, where you can just walk here, relax. They have an amphitheater where they do a lot of concerts. And so it's a real happening area at downtown. Now, below downtown, separating it is the, this is the mouth of the Miami River, which starts right here. And this is basically where Miami started. Mary Brickle basically resided on the Brickle side, and Julia Tuttle basically developed the downtown area. So Brickell will be south of the Miami River. This part is, is gorgeous. And uh, the things they have done to it now, they have Brickell City Center, which is an outdoor mall with high-end shops, restaurants, cafes, theaters, um, you name it, they got it. And it's all brand new, beautiful. Um, it's outdoor, but if it rains, you won't get wet because it's three levels with ceiling and condo lifestyle all around it. It's got hotels. So that's, that's another hot spot. If you like to be in the know and uh, don't want to miss out on anything, Mary Brickle Village is another area with outdoor shops, so all connected, all together. This is, this is a very walkable area. If you live in Brickle, you do not need to, you can survive without a car, believe it or not. Either Uber or walk around, they have everything. There's like two Publixes, shopping centers, lots of restaurants, bars, nightclubs, uh, now if you work depends on where you work if you work at here it'd be fantastic but you got expressways everywhere main roads you can get in and out you're close to the beach it's a great place if you like the the city lifestyle and this is typically the financial district the brick was a financial district and you don't have to be young and single with no kids a lot of families that have helped move into brickle they love this area close to the water now, most of them moved here on the south part of Brickell, dividing 15th Road, sort of right here, this curve right here. It starts becoming a little more like a family oriented. A lot of kids, believe it or not, you see strollers walking down and enjoying the, this nice area that we have here. Crazy Bayou is it's a restaurant right on the water, great food, great ambiance. Um, but you don't have to be single to enjoy the Brickell lifestyle. Um, it's a good mix where this is really the heart of it, but if you want a little be away from the hectic uh, part of Brickle, you can live on the south part. These are older style condominiums on this side, which have beautiful views of Key Biscayne and all this water right here, which on nice days you see boats, sailboats sailing around. So it depends what kind of lifestyle you're looking for. And uh, if you're married with kids or you're single and you want to enjoy the nightlife. This is the causeway that leads you over to Kibi Skin. Let me zoom out of here. So you take this causeway, which is one of the prettiest rides over this bridge right here, all the way into Kibi Skin. You can see either daytime or nighttime, all the downtown buildings in Brickle and downtown, either lit up at night or during the day. This is filled with boats, 
This is a little marina. You have here, um, let's see if I can find it. This is the Miami Sea Aquarium. But on the entrance, you have love this restaurants. I love going there with my wife and kids. We enjoy it. It's called the Rusty Pelican. You're basically, it's a restaurant right on the water right here with boats all around. And the views while you're eating are spectacular. You're basically looking at all the cruise ships going by in the downtown, the boats, the jet skis going everywhere. And besides that, the food is outstanding. It's a little higher end, but it's not really that exclusive and high end. So it's something to consider. They have a banquet hall. You can do events there. The Rusty Pelican, definitely recommend it. So this is after the causeway. All this, if you like going to the beach, it, you can just come. Let me zoom out of here. Okay, this is beaches on both sides of the expressway. You can just pull in, there's parking lots, and it's a more natural beach where there's no hotels or anything. It's just, you just pull up your car and you go to the beach on both sides, uh, which is pretty cool. La Playita, and Hobi Island, Hobi Beach. Um, and there's also like food trucks where you can eat. There's windsurfing, you can jet, rent, rent jet skis. So as you move down, you got the Miami Sea Aquarium, which has been here forever. One of the oldest attractions in Miami. And the um, Universal Miami Marine School. This is Virginia Key, which is a key that's very like uh, natural. Like there's not much, there's no living in here, uh, no residential. It's if you like trails, there's some trails here. There's a beach that, thank God they started cleaning up because people were leaving garbage and stuff around. but county and people who live around this area have done a, a nice job of just volunteering and cleaning up this beach people love to just come and hang out because it's very simple there's no hotels no traffic not complicated but as you continue down this highway you get into Key King and this is a, a fabulous place to live whether you like condo living and being away from everything a little more exclusive it's not a private island but definitely um, a more not secluded but away from everything that has a golf course. They used to have tennis tournaments here, but now they moved it to where the Dolphins, Miami Dolphins play in the big stadium. You have all this is Crandon Park Beach. This gets packed, there's a lot of parking, and, but it's another great beach to visit. As you pass the golf course and the beaches, all this when you're driving is just full of mangroves, trees, very natural. Not much, there's no construction going on here. Of developments as you enter the village of Kibiskin is where you have the actual city the village so on the left side you're gonna have a lot of your homes single family homes beautiful single half family homes and, and on the right side you can have a lot of condos and you got the Ritz Carlton Hotel and restaurants down this road and bars and cafe shops ice cream parlors and as you exit here you enter the more reserve area not natural there's no construction here but you can go to the beach if you take all the way down to the end to the lighthouse. This is also a beach. They have a little restaurant, cafe where you can you can eat something. And uh, it's similar to this beach, but it's a little not private, but less people come here. It's easier access park, and you're, you're literally right there. Um, and this little restaurant is really cool called Borders Grill. It's like a little house on the water right here. This little cove that comes in back in the I don't know when a long time ago they had still houses that they built. There's still a few left and people take their boat and hang out, um, drink some beers and just enjoy the nice day outside. But they had little stilt homes built on the water where people would go and have parties over there. And Miami's always been a, a pretty dynamic place with a lot of party animals. So Borders Grill is, is really cool, it's very casual. And you're right on the little water there. you see the boats coming in. Um, it's Latin seafood uh, fusion, where there's a you can eat seafood with a mix of Latin uh, arroz con frijoles or a snapper or salmon. Uh, have some drinks, really cool reserve place. It gets really full because people know about it already, but but it's not that crowded. It's not a commercial place, so that's a little nice place to visit and keep your skin if you live there. All right, so let's zoom out of here so we can see more of Miami. So as we continue, we see here, we have the Coconut Grove area bordering this East Coast. 
Okay, right here you have Coral Gables, um, which is one of the prettiest cities in all of Miami. City Beautiful is the nickname of Coral Gables. And for a reason, because it's just beautiful. Uh, the gardens are maintained. Now, if you live here, get ready to follow all the rules of Coral Gables because that's how they maintain it so nice. It's not a place that it's on, you pay an association. Now, the property taxes are a little higher here because they really take care of their city. They want to maintain a certain look and uh, so attract a certain um, lifestyle. And, but it's really gorgeous. Um, the north part of Coral Gables is called Little Gables, which if you want to break into Coral Gables as a purchase an entry level home, this is their most inexpensive homes in Coral Gables on the north side called Little Gables. It's still beautiful. Uh, you're close to the Granada Golf Course. Um, you're close to Miracle Mile, which is right here. Uh, the homes are not as big, but they are very nice. A lot of people have remodeled them. Some have expanded. Not big lots, so there's not much you can do there, but the values are pretty high. Now, around the golf course and closer to Coral Way, which is the main streets going east and west, the streets in Miami go east and west, and the avenues north and south. The homes around this golf course right here are, are very nice. They're older homes, but they're larger lots, larger homes. So that's something if, if you like the, the Spanish architecture um, and large homes, two-story homes as well, close to the city of Miami, but away where it's a nice neighborhood to raise a family. This is a great spot. You got the Biltmore Hotel, which was one of the prettiest, which is, as you see right here. And here on Coral Way, you have from 42nd Avenue to 37th, it's called Miracle Mile, which is a street full of shops, bars, restaurants, a lot of things happening, people walking up and down. It's a street where you're always gonna see people walking. And a few blocks north and south, the same, full of restaurants, bars, coffee shops, ice cream parlors, and a lot of things to do. Now, Monday through Friday, there's a lot of uh, people working in this area, so you're still gonna see people walking around, eating lunch, one or two hour lunches, because there's great restaurants there, so it's hard not to go have lunch if you work there. Um, and even on the weekends, the people who live there, okay, there's no work, but they like to go there and hang out there because there's residential all over this area. So you can walk to it. And if you don't want to walk to it, there's, um, not a shuttle, but it's a golf cart called the freebie that it's free to any Coral Gables resident. And it'll take you not all of Coral Gables, but I think all of this area to and from anywhere you want to go, you download the app, you reserve it, they pick you up, drop you off. They do have certain hours, but it's super convenient. So Coral Gables is one of the most walkable, uh, larger uh, municipalities in Miami-Dade County because Brickell is very walkable, but it's a you know, smaller area, everything is congested. But if you want space, you still want the walkability, Coral Gables is, is a great, great neighborhood for singles, couples, or family with kids, fantastic. Venetian pool, it's another nice little pool uh, made out of coral and very old, but it's very well maintained. Kids love it. Uh, there's also parks. I love taking my kids. There's different parks uh, we go to down here. I mentioned the, the Biltmore Hotel. They have one of the most amazing pools in the Biltmore. You can actually, if you don't want to stay in the hotel, you can rent the cabanas and stay there, enjoy the pool. Uh, really cool. You have the golf course in the Biltmore. You have another golf course here, which is the Riviera Golf Course. That one is a private golf course. So Coral Gables is from 40, 57th Avenue, which is this one. So very narrow, east to west, and this is 37th Avenue. 20 blocks wide, but it goes all the way from 8th Street down, all the way crossing US-1, which is the main highway. It goes through downtown all the way up north and goes all the way down to the Keys. That's Phoenician Pool. and. As you go south of US-1, the homes here are, they're a little more expensive because you're closer to the water, closer to US-1, closer to the University of Miami. And I wanna say they're nicer, they're all pretty nice in Coral Gables, but maybe some are a little bigger, um, but you're just closer to other nice neighborhoods like the Grove, Pine Crest, High Pine, South Miami's. So the values increase closer to a lot of uh, great schools and 
another fabulous location to live. The same type style architecture, although there is a little area in Coral Gables, this is, it's like a few homes that have a Chinese architecture, it's super cool, people take tours as you check them out. And as you go closer to the water, Coral Gables has all this property called Coco Plum, Gables Estates, Gables by the Sea, which here you're going to find larger homes and uh, more gated communities because Coral Gables is not many gated communities, it's more open. But here you're going to find a lot of gated, exclusive, high-end communities and a lot of waterfront properties. This part is really beautiful over here, more luxurious living on this side. High Pines is another fabulous location close to South Miami. South Miami is actually a municipality within Miami-Dade County and uh, it's another fabulous location uh, close to Coral Gables, High Pines, uh, close to all the expressways. The homes there are a little newer but not that new. They have more land, the lots are bigger, the, the prices are still up there but it could be a little bit, you don't get the Coral Gables taxes which is nice and you're still close in, to the Gables and other areas surrounding it. Okay and we're working our way in south you have Pinecrest which is another fabulous Pinecrest and Palmetto Bay are family oriented neighborhoods with tons of beautiful parks fabulous schools one of the best school districts are in this area it's public private charter schools you name it close to the water if you love biking a great biking trails all along this area Pinecrest Palmetto Bay even into the Coconut Grove area there's great biking along Old Cutler Road, which was one of the prettiest roads of all of Miami. Let me see if I can zoom in so you can see Old Cutler Road. It's a winding, scenic road that goes all the way north and ends all the way at the beginning of the Key Biscayne entrance, all the way down to in Cutler Bay. So this area is all filled with single family homes, large lots, and more affordable than the Grove and the Gables price per square footage but again they're bigger homes and uh, great if you're a family with kids I, I love this location right here Color Bay is another little hidden secret that the homes there are very nice and you're not paying the price of Palmetto Bay because you're getting farther away from the city you're farther south but Color Bay is gorgeous and a lot of gated communities there that they've made close to the water there's one called Cutler K which is a private community and it is gorgeous um, there's they're huge homes very affordable uh, price per square footage and you got water everywhere very well maintained um, and I don't know if I mentioned Deering Estates there's a community there that's a very high-end exclusive community again close to the water it has its own golf course it's beautiful okay as you can see Miami-Dade is very big a lot of territory now all this is the Everglades nobody's li living there and you can't even build into the Everglades thank God because if not all this will be taken over so this is all natural the uh, preserve national parks now below Color Bay you have Naranja you have Homestead the Florida City Redlands area Redlands are more over here on this side if you love maybe it's pretty cool because you can be in the city life you can be suburbs but if you like to be out in the country like the farms or you like animals um, Homestead and the Redlands is a great place to live and um, maybe let's say you work in Miami but you like that that ranch style living uh, have a farm lots of acres and be secluded from everyone then Homestead and the Redlands is a great location and the prices per square footage are the best in all of Miami-Dade County they're the least expensive to purchase a home the Redlands will be up on this side right here on the left a little northwest of Homestead there we go Redlands area of fruit and spice parks so all this and it's really pretty I know a lot of high-end fashion magazines they take pictures for the models they'll come down here and they'll take pictures in little hidden gems where there's like waterfalls lagoons and beautiful scenic trees a lot of birds parrots so if you like nature and be in the in the out away from everybody this is a great area redlands and homestead homestead has developed it's more of a city but you still there's a lot of communities gated communities great houses you're far away from everybody it's but it's populated enough where you feel you're in a, a city and not out like in the Redlands. Redlands, you're really out there alone, and all homes and some, you know some 
restaurant shots, but not not that many. And if you take US one, it'll take you all the way to the Florida Keys, go all the way down. So let's zoom out so we can get back to the heart of Miami. So we did this side. Now, as you move far west, you got the, the candle area. The candle area is right here in the middle. I love this location. I actually live by here. This location has great homes with huge lots. All this is single family residential areas. And you got, you're close to the Ronald Reagan Turnpike, which takes you north and south. A74, which, which connects you to the Turnpike going east but north as well connects you to the other main highway which is the 826 expressway takes you north a close to us one so close to many highways that takes you out of there fast into other neighborhoods on the east and within here you have us one which there's tons of things to do and tons of restaurants you have the fall shopping center which is one of my favorites i love going there with my family my kids love it there's a place called churro mania which is um, they sell churros. If you don't know what churros is, it's a, like fried a yuca, a, like a dough that's fried and they're like elephant ears and they put sugar and cinnamon. You dip it in either Nutella, chocolate, whatever dipping you want. And my kids love it. They, they can't get enough of it. We're always going there and they have great stores there. They have the movie theater, um, restaurants. Let me pull up map is acting up a little bit so you can see where the falls is this is a candle area all this is restaurant to me all this is residential single family homes beautiful homes and great price for the square footage and here you got the fall shopping center you have macy's uh and a lot of uh, boutique stores it's an outdoor it's called the falls because it's an outdoor shopping mall and it's beautiful because it's full of rocks and waterfalls and so as you're walking you hear the waterfalls going it's very relaxing it's so one of those malls where you don't feel hectic, it's a very relaxing mall. Uh, so we love going there, checking it out. All right, so let me zoom out. Here we go, Village of the Falls. Here you got, there's a golf course. Um, here we go, the Falls Shopping Center, which is all of this. There's a golf course in here, Bay Golf Course, if you like to play golf. There's tons of golf courses. So as we move over to the west part of Miami, it's the most affordable because you're farther west from all the action from the city of Miami. Um, and that's the newest part of Miami because that's where it ended up expanding. Back then, there was really nothing going on. Now, then there was homes and now there's homes and there's a lot of activities. There's tons of restaurants, shopping, uh, parks, um, a lot of things to do. A lot of people live here and they don't really need to go to the east side anymore. There's a, an airport, but it's not really a main airport. So over here, this whole area right here is basically almost West Kendall, the Three Lakes. You have the hammocks to farther out west. This road right here is Chrome Avenue, which is the farthest west you can go. It goes all the way, it connects to the Redlands and Homestead, all the way to the Keys. And it takes you north all the way, uh, really goes all the way to Orlando and even farther. It's one of those old roads that um, that has been expanded. Back then it was a, only one way, one, one, one way and the other way, like a two way highway. Now it's a four way lane. Miami has expanded all the way to Chrome. You got Kendall West here, another golf course, and there's a lot of condo living in the Kendall West area. It's pretty congested in this area in the sense where there's a lot of condos. It's a very affordable uh, location and there's tons of you know, things to do in restaurants and in shops. Uh, you got the trampoline adventure park here. And we got a Walmart. So you don't feel like you're out in the boonies anymore. Before, yeah, but not anymore. And there's a new project that is, might take a while, but 836 is a highway that goes east to west. Now it ends right here on 137th Avenue. But as you see, Miami has expanded past this. There's a lot of people living in this area on the west side. This is the most affordable um, location to live in Miami. So this expressway, they're going to extend it all the way farther west as possible, close to Chrome, and bring it all the way down. So this is going to alleviate a lot of the traffic jams because if you live here and you work on the east, you're going to get a lot of traffic just getting to the expressway and then going north and then going more east. So this is going to help in the sense where if you live by here, you can just hop on the expressway and you don't need to take that street lights anymore. 
So once they do that, this whole area, I think is going to go up in value. And it's going to be a lot more convenient to live in because you can get to the east side much faster than now. So you got the Tamiami area, which is sort of in the middle, University Park, Westchester, this whole area. I grew up in Westchester uh, back then. For me, uh, it was a little farther west. Uh, west Kendall was very far west, but now Westchester is super central. This is where FIU is, University Park, Florida International University, which is one of the main universities. You got that, and then University of Miami over here. Now, in Westchester, this is a, a great neighborhood because a lot of single family homes, like 90% of them, great uh, um, neighborhood, very safe, amazing schools from public schools, charter schools. And down 40th Street is a main street, which is a very busy commercial in a sense where there's a lot of restaurants, shops, um, shopping centers, very active in street in this area. There's two parks, Tropical Park, and here down here below universe, in, by University Park, you got Tamiami Park, another main one. And just tons of great single family homes for great prices if you can afford to live on the east side, but you still want a nice home and not that far west. This middle section is fabulous right here. Now moving up north, let's go north of US 41. You have Fountain Blue. This location is very affordable and there's basically all of it is condo living and there's a lot of traffic because there's a lot of people living in this smaller area. Now the good thing there's a lot of access getting out, a lot of expressways. So once they're in there, you can easily go anywhere, but it's very affordable to live in this area. Also, this is a great community, like a rental community. Uh, not rental communities, but if you're looking to rent, a lot of condos up for rent in this area for a good price. You got Sweetwater uh, moving up north and Doral, which between Sweetwater and Doral, you have Dolphin Mall, which is one of the largest, actually it's the largest outlet uh, mall in this area, in Miami area. It's huge, it's all of this, it's an Ikea, this is a movie theater, tons of restaurants, shops, there's even a few hotels that have popped up um, and it's always packed, but it depends what time you go, it's, you know, you can always find parking, but this is one cool spot. I love going here to, this is one of the best theaters to go to. Um, and then you can go have some ice cream downstairs and a restaurant, they have a cheesecake factory. This is a great area. Now moving up here, here you have the Miami airport, which as you can see, the Miami airport is smack in the middle of Miami, Miami Dade County. So we went over the east side, the south, and the west side and now we're going to talk about the north up here you're close in Doral another city that's constantly growing and, and it's beautiful it's a great city it has a little bit of everything in the sense where there's parts that are, are beautiful uh, all of it's pretty but this, it's, um, there's parts of it were very industrial a lot of warehouses and there's a lot of business going on in Doral anything from warehouse exporting there's government jobs, but the huge police station, there's parks, there's resorts. You got the Trump National Resort there with like four or five golf courses. There's another golf course nearby. Beautiful, huge single family homes in, in gated communities and non-gated communities. Some are very exclusive. I know a lot of, a lot of famous people that want to live more far west. They pick the route to live in and there's uh, two new places that pretty recently opened uh, downtown Doral. Let's, let me see if I can pull it up on 87th Avenue up here in this section. It's a, like a downtown area of Doral because before downtown, for Doral did not have a downtown area. So downtown Doral now has shops, restaurants, it's growing. It has like four huge condo buildings. Um, this whole area is Trump National has golf courses and single family homes on the northwest side of it. Um, below 41st here, you're gonna have more of your, your businesses going on here, because you're closer to the airport. Residential, you got up here, you got up here, you got apartments and condos on the west side. Condos here, on the right you got condos. So you have downtown Doral, which is a nice spot to visit. If you live in Doral, and uh, City Place Doral, which is another place that has a theater, bars, restaurants, large, in lounges, ice cream parlors. So it's great for family with kids. Also great if you work there and you like to live, work and play in the same area. Doral has it all. You don't need to live there, leave there for anything. And you're close to all the expressways. 826 Turnpike, 836, which takes you 
east and west. So let's move out of the route, let's zoom out. You have uh, on the right, let's talk about Miami Springs, which is right north of Miami International Airport. This is a hidden gem in Miami called Miami Springs, very old a city in the, in the limits of the Miami municipality. It has a golf course in the middle, a little downtown area. It, it's basically, this is like a gate because there's a little canal that runs through it. So the only entrance in and out is here and on this road, which is Northwest 36, 41st Street. And that's it, it's bordered here. These are the train tracks, this street. Uh, so it's like a little triangle. All this is single family homes. They have a school, golf course, a little downtown area, some shops, and, and that's it. People who live in Miami Springs love it and they don't really move from there. It's, it feels like Coral Gables, but very, very small, much smaller. So one of those places where wherever you go, people know you, you get to know everybody in Miami Springs. So if you like that, like a small town living, Miami Springs is definitely the small town living spot in Miami. Okay, as we move here, Hialeah is a very large area. A mostly populated with a Hispanic culture, very heavily influenced by Hispanic culture, especially the Cuban culture. And it's the largest in population wise. It's so big, it has its own separate addresses. So it could be confusing when you get there because it has the Miami address and they have the Hialeah address. So whenever you're going there, they, if they ask you for directions or you gotta go there for, for something, Make sure you know if it's the Hialeah address or the Miami-Dade address. So it goes from H Street, East H Street here, all the way west and north. This is Hialeah Gardens. All this is a, this part, there's a lot of industrial here. And down the main street, which is 49th Street, is Amelia Air Park, Amelia, Air, Amelia Earhart Park, which is a very large park. What else do you have up here? Miami Lakes is another little hidden gem like Miami Springs, which is bordered by the expressway. 26 goes north, but here it doesn't go north anymore. It goes east. So it's sort of a little pocket in here. Um, and it's a master plan community where it was planned from the beginning, how they were going to lay out the whole city. This is the heart of it. It's, you notice it spirals outward. This is like a downtown area. You got a golf course here, tons of condo living, single family homes, little bit of everything. It's not that big, but it's one of those places where if you live there, you feel you're part of a community and you get to know everyone and once you start living there. Okay, and here you got Palm Springs North. You have a golf course, Miami Country Club of Miami. This is basically the more the borderline of Miami-Dade County, because then you have Broward County on the north side. All right, so we are up here on the north side, Miami Lakes, Miami Gardens. There's another place, uh, another city, where it has been developing and trending in the right direction. That's where the Dolphins play in the, the stadium. Let's zoom out of here. The football stadium is up here by Miami Gardens, in Miami Gardens actually. And the east side, the northeast part of Miami Gardens is a newer part. There's been a lot of new development. Hard Rock Stadium is up here. A lot of new developments in this area right here, uh, close to the Turnpike, the expressways, where a lot of people have been moving in. And then this old part of Miami Gardens has been slowly been, re re been renovating and revamping. A lot of investors buying older homes, renovating them, fixing them, and a little more affordable. So the area is definitely training in the right direction, close to St. Thomas University, a great school. And I'm now moving to the north part, northeast part of Miami. You have a very popular city of Miami. It's a municipality called Aventura. It's uh, not a large area, but is very highly populated. Tons of beautiful condos, beautiful views, close to Sunny Isle Beach. If you like to be on the beach or you have a boat, this whole part of town is a different vibe of Miami. It just has a different feel. I don't know if you're just closer to the water, but um, this Aventura, Golden Beach, Sunny Isles, this whole Eastern Shores, there's a lot of condos on the water. See those little inlets? If you have a boat, this is fabulous because this intercoastal, if you like, if you like the boat lifestyle, this is beautiful. Taking a little scenic drive in your boat up and down here, people do it all the time. Gets packed. So this is another fabulous place to live in. Not many single-family homes. A lot of condo lifestyle. If you like that, a lot of luxury condos. And so a lot of people living here now. If you live here and you're gonna work somewhere else, you might get stuck in traffic because 
you gotta go all the way 95 so there's traffic getting to and from 95 look how far you are from from 95 here you're close but still there's a lot of traffic or if you go down if you're gonna do your lifestyle down here then up and down it's not that bad but if you go east and west traffic could be pretty bad you got north miami and north miami beach all this area here you have a lot of single family homes great opportunity to buy at good prices and renovate because there are older homes that have stayed outdated and I definitely can find some great deals here and it's still a good neighborhood because you're close to the water, close to 95 and you got Aventura right there. You take a hop on, on US1, you're down to downtown. So this little area is great if you're looking for single family homes, good deals, maybe you want to renovate. This is a good little area. And down US1, there have been tons, tons of shopping centers and restaurants popping up and you have the more urban feel on this part of the city it's closer less lots if you like that it's like more city lifestyle this side is, is the place to be Miami Shores is another fabulous neighborhood uh, you have the Miami Shores Country Club it's also like a Coral Gables in where everybody knows each other but because it's smaller like the Miami Springs Miami Lakes area but the homes are beautiful. They're like Coral Gable style Spanish architecture, older 1920 homes. It has its own little downtown. Close to US1, you're not far from anything. You wanna go to the beach, you're close to the beach. It has its own a tennis club. You're close to Nor North Bay Village and Norman the Isles, which are very nice to have a golf course here. Nice areas, so. Um, this whole area, it's very populated, there's traffic, but a lot of activity. You feel like, you know, there's a lot of life going on in this area right here. El Portal is similar to, Ma well not similar, it's south of Miami Shores. It's been trending also in the right direction. A great little area with single family homes. Now, as we move down here, you got the whole north part of downtown, which is the Upper East Side, Wynwood Design District, uh, Edgewater. This place is really cool and has been taken off Little Haiti. Um, Design District is right here. We have the new luxury outdoor and fashion and shop. If you're all about fashion, like Gucci just moved up in their headquarters here. There's a lot of high-end fashion uh, happening in this area with a lot of shops, cafes, restaurants. If you like that lifestyle, this is the place to be. Wynwood. Like I mentioned earlier, is the artistic part of Miami where if you love art and you love walking around, it's very walkable. It has a small town feel, but that urban is small town. This is a great area. Wynwood Design District. Here's single family homes up here. Uh, older, but a lot of them remodeled. In, in Wynwood, you have some single family homes, but it tends to be more condos um, yeah, on this side. Now Edgewater, all this is full of condos, which they have beautiful, gorgeous views of Miami Beach. Um, so if you love that, there's a park here. That is, is a nice park to play soccer, volleyball, and there's a playground for the kids. Um, and all this is condo living, basketball courts, great neighborhood. I used to live here a long time ago uh, when I was single on this part of town, that park, and there was only that Bay Park Plaza where I used to live no other condos it was all old condos that all got run down and tore down and now there's some beautiful condos right on the water here so and that's it there you have it you have oh i forgot to mention this little area where the mammy heater mammy heat play in the arena on this side there used to be a call a park called bicentennial park this got redeveloped into an art museum a nice outdoor park the planetarium is here and it has a beautiful view on the backside where you can just go to the museum or you can just come and there's a nice cafe and there's a little uh, area where you can have some wine, some seating, you can you can sit down and just have a nice conversation and watch the nice beautiful views on a nice day. You can walk around the park. This little area right here is a gorgeous area to just come and hang out if you live in this um, close to this area. Okay, so let's see what else. Let me zoom out. That's about it, guys. I know it was a lot to cover. Can't believe we did it all in less than an hour. <laughs> and you got the Miami airports. Let's see what I didn't mention. 
in the Miami Marlins baseball park, the stadium, is over here on this side. Let me see if I can move this around. Northwest 7th. Here we found it. Lone Depot Park, which is where the Miami Marlins play, the stadium. It's a pretty brand new park and it's, it's beautiful. They wanted to make it there because the old Orange Bowl was built there in the early 1900s. That's where the U University of Miami played. And there was tons of big time football played there. Uh, and it just had a good vibe, good energy in that area. And they built in the same location where he saw the Miami Heat play and the, the Miami Dolphins, the University of Miami, the F FIU. So more or less you have a better idea of the locations where the condos, where the single family homes. And if you like to live on the beach, that could be a separate video that I can do. But it's basically all this. You got South of Fifth, which is fantastic. Maybe I'll do another little video only on the beach. Uh, you got a golf course. All this is Miami Beach. So you got South Beach, Mid Beach, and North Beach. We can discuss that. But if you love beach living, this is a whole different world where you can live, work, play, and just not have to go to Miami for anything. It's its own little economy. Actually, it's not a little, it's a big economy. All right, I hope that was helpful and I did not overwhelm you more than you already feel when making your move to Miami, Florida. But I try to give you as much detail, as much information as possible using the maps. You can get an idea of how far things are to each other, different neighborhoods from another neighborhood and what's around it. Um, so hopefully that helped. And um, making your move, again, is a very difficult decision. So step number one is to make sure you know what you want, what type of housing you want, and the lifestyle, what you like to do. Because from then, then it's just going and taking you to a different neighborhoods that fit your, your desired um, criteria and go ahead and take some tours of the neighborhoods and houses. So make sure to give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or schedule a Zoom call so we can help you make that move to Miami, Florida as smooth as possible. And until next time, we'll talk to you later.